James Kaufman, World News Report today, December 23rd, 2024. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, we just had a strong Earth-faced M-class solar flare. This is really our third M-class solar flare of the day. And this came from a newly formed Delta Sunspot Group. So let's get started. To start the day off, we had an M1 solar flare. It popped off at 2.31 UTC time, which is really about 8.31 last night central. This was a filament eruption and not assigned to a certain sunspot group. Next up, we had another M1 solar flare. That came from sunspot group 3928. You can see that that peaked right around 629 right here and that would be about 129 central here last night in the US now most recently we've had an M 9.05 solar flare just shy of an X flare basically earth facing from a Delta class sunspot group and it definitely created a coronal mass ejection that will affect Earth. That flare peaked at 11.12 UTC time, or this morning about 5.12. Waking me up, by the way. Heading over to Space Weather Live, we see the activity. Some of this activity is from yesterday, as you can see. We had an M1.1 solar flare late yesterday. From 39.32, which is now morphed into a Delta class sunspot and produced the M9.05. So, like we said, to start the day here, we start off with an M1 flare. It was a filament eruption, peaked at 2.31 UTC time, about 8.31 Central. That was followed up by a strong C flare, and then by an M1 flare here, and that was generated by Sunspot Group 3928, peaked at 629 UTC time, or right after midnight here in the U.S. And now for the big flare thus far today, an M9.05. This is actually this flare right here. It's the biggest flare we've had in 72 hours. Of course, it's the biggest flare we've seen in the last 24 hours. Again, that came from Sunspot Group AR3932. It's now a Delta Class Sunspot Group, the most complex sunspot group we know about. And they're about to raise the chances of an X-Class solar flare because this just morphed into a Delta Class Sunspot Group after, after it produced the M9.05 that again peaked at about 11.12 UTC time or about 5.12 this morning here centrally in the U.S. Currently, we have a 10% chance of having an X-Class solar flare. I think that that will increase quite a bit after we saw Sunspot Group AR3932 morph into a Delta-Class sunspot. We have a 65% chance of having an M-Class solar flare. That ship has sailed. And, of course, a 99% chance of having a C-Class solar flare we're still running a C plus baseline. Remember, we used to report C flares as big deals. So I'm sure y'all remember that AIA, SDO, and HDMI are not active right now. And it was because supposedly of a flood at Stanford University. I don't know why they wouldn't have backup servers, but that's the story. So we're using the gong intensogram to take a look at the sunspot groups. So it turns out that the last two actual flares came from the only two sunspot groups that were beta gamma sunspot groups. Now this sunspot group here that just produced the M9.05 has morphed now into a delta class. This will be red upon refreshing or when they get the information changed. So we had a beta gamma sunspot group shoot an M1 flare 3928 followed by the M9.05 coming out of 3932 while it was still a beta 
Gamma Sunspot Group, now after that fact, it has morphed into a Delta Class Sunspot Group. We currently have, let's see, four, seven, eight, nine, ten Earth-facing Sunspot Groups with more trouble coming around the limb. Heading over to GOES 16 Solar Ultraviolet Imager. Now we don't have SDO, so we're not going to be able to show you this blast because it happened just before, just before the sequence here. And this is going to be 3932 here, 3928 right here. And you can see all of the sunspot groups coming around the incoming limb here. Now, we've got some serious solar winds hitting planet Earth right now and plasma. I'm just trying to figure out what generated it at this point. We will go over that in just one moment. All right, heading over to Lasco C3. We got lucky on this one, folks. Look at the time here, 11.18. We know that 11.12 uh, is about when the flare popped off from the sun, being this little circle inside. This is a shield for our camera around here. And you'll see the chroma ejection leave from the M9.05. It's going to definitely be geoeffective towards Earth. Look at that. You can see it brighten up when it hits Lasco. Wow. It's a fairly strong chroma ejection. Definitely, definitely going to strike Earth period. All right, heading over to our D-Region Absorption Prediction Center, we see that we're basically in a polar cap absorption event. Now, we had several X flares that were backside flares this week, and I believe that that raised our proton count up, and I will show you that. And then I'm going to show you the impact, which really happens here at of course 11 right so there's the peak there 11 12 is what they're calling out here see if i can get it right there's the peak and you can see that this reinforces our polar cap absorption event especially in the south pole as it's summertime down there and much closer much closer to the sun than the north pole so that is the M9.05 solar flare popped off over most all of the Atlantic Ocean, all of Africa, and parts of Brazil here. It's like nothing else was basically affected. And since then, we've seen no activity, although we're still seeing a polar cap absorption event in both the Arctic and Antarctic, or the North Pole and South Poles. Now, we had three events this week backside large solar flares that look like they very well could be x-class solar flares and we had our protons well bump here in the road on the 17th but really start moving up on the 19th into the 20th into the 21st and i thought we were going to break the space weather alert threshold or warning threshold of 10 million volts here uh, it has started to subside but we have a heavy proton count the 22nd and then now into the 23rd although the m9.05 has not moved that higher so i don't know if it's going to be uh, pushing protons towards earth let's hope that this actually dissipates throughout the day today and into tomorrow so we do still have soho it's an esa product and they were not updating it, but they have updated it today. And this is from 7.06 Central Time this morning. So we've got a really good picture of what's going on here. We see our coronal holes up here in the north. We see AR3928 right here and AR3932 that is now morphed into a Delta Class sunspot here. And all these very strong sunspot groups. One or two of which may have produced an X-class solar flare on the backside in the last few days coming around the incoming limb. Jumping over to our KP indexes. This gives you a summary of the plasma and solar winds hitting planet Earth at any given time. We don't see much of anything on our boulder KP index. 
uh, as well as nothing on our Fredericksburg KP index. We see we started the day with a slight geomagnetic disturbance, not storm here on our estimated planetary index. This is NASA and NOAA's uh, updated KP index that they use exclusively. And here on our college index, we see that the last three hours we had a geomagnetic disturbance. Now let's see how that matches up to what we see on our Discover satellite. All right, the good news is our shields are up here in blue. Plasma's way down here at one and then jumps up into, well, space weather territory 19 centimeters cubed what a short period and then there's missing data for about an hour and a half here did it go higher there's a 22.9 very strange event here it's lasted for it looks like about one two three just over three hours a pretty strong impact i'm not quite sure what happened there but none of our KP indexes lit up at this time. They lit up before it, during the beginning of the day here for the first three hours, and for the last three hours. <laughs> so, uh, I will say that here, we see the same thing occur for the last three hours. So, the KP index that's indicating a geomagnetic disturbance for the last three hours is correct. Uh, but this is not as strong. We can see it going up to about 17 centimeters cubed. 10 being space weather threshold compared to 22 and higher over here for several hours. Now, I don't know what these huge steps are. Regularly, when you see an impact, uh, it doesn't just jump from, see if we can get it from one or less than one centimeter cubed up to 22. It's just not something you see happen. I don't know why they've removed about an hour and 45 minutes worth of data here. Look where the solar winds were last night up. They have them up at right at 800 kilometers per second. Incredibly strong. Uh, you can see that they're varying in between about 550. And we see some peaks of 667 today. Now that could have been what it picked up. Uh, well, what one of the indexes picked up as the start of the day, which is really about here, 629. That's some pretty strong solar winds inbound. That looks like it has been dissipating all day long. You can see the temperature rose with these spikes perfectly. The plasma, following the plasma, just like it's supposed to here. We also had the solar winds be pushed right in front of this plasma. That's what happened here. You've seen solar winds that were pushed right in front of the plasma and accelerated up to about 650. So this is the geomagnetic disturbance we're seeing on the estimated planetary kp index take another quick look at that and of course any any of this fast solar wind back here could have caused uh, the other disturbance we see on the college index all right so the estimated planetary index didn't do a great job they did pick up strong solar winds at the beginning of the day and have not picked up any of the plasma it looks like our college index picked up some of the latest plasma, but they didn't pick up the plasma that occurred about four or five hours ago. Two big impacts to Earth. I'm not quite sure what occurred there. We weren't expecting a coronal mass ejection inbound, as far as I know, until tomorrow, Christmas Eve. All right, finally, taking a look at the planetstay.com, we see that the moon is moving into position where it's going to be in between Earth and the sun with a geomagnetic connection to two gas giants behind us, Jupiter and Uranus, and Mars in the inner solar system. We know that we have a geomagnetic connection because they're lit up like a Christmas tree. As the moon moves more so to be in between the sun and Earth, I believe that we will in fact see an earthquake uptick that could start happening as soon as today, but definitely into tomorrow and the next day. We should see earthquake activity uptick along with volcanic activity. The positions of the planets have the most to do with solar flares and with any type of earthquake or volcanic activity that you see. It's the geomagnetic connection that moves the plates and activates our sun. With that said, God bless. Please share, subscribe, and always remember anything's possible. Bizarro world. CME inbound.